Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Back with another L Word season two video. I know, super shocking, right? So we're going to be having just a fun little video today. I've got some more season two things planned like this where we are going to be going over the rankings of the storylines this season. Now, I haven't included every single storyline. It's more the like season arcs and like big relationships because otherwise, I mean, I'd be here for an hour right, <laughs> ranking every single one. And I did try and have a little bit of fun with the categories. This is just a fun little video. I'm not trying to get people fired or anything like that. So we are going to be breaking it down into five categories and the categories I'm going to explain each one a little bit so before that make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and if you enjoy the video leave a big thumbs up and let me know your rankings down in the comment section so we are going to be breaking them down into these five categories and the number one top category is bet and Gigi on the kitchen counter and you know the this is just the there's a lot of great things in season two but to me this was just like peak lesbian content to super super hot like you know arguably well not really even arguably the most popular characters for the majority of people from the original L word and Gen Q Bet and Gigi and the ring everything so I was like this this is peak Gen Q content so that's that's the number one spot that's what you want to be going for the next category is Wheezy's job on Bet and Tina's extension. And I think that's this category is kind of, you've done a really good job, but you, you just drop the ball at the end. You know, we know Wheezy never came back to finish the railings, which they mentioned 9,000 times in the season six finale. So I feel like this is an apt category for Gen Q season two. The next category, we're getting a little further down now, and the next category is called Shane's Dog. That's where it's kind of the opposite of Wheezy's, where there, there are some moments of, of brilliance, but just what, what happened here, it was like Shane's Dog, you know, they appeared once in the second season, and then poof, they're gone. So that's our next category. And going into our fourth category, that is going to be, you know, getting real down in the depths here. It's Jenny's Manatee Dreamscape. And I think everyone who's seen the OG knows what I'm talking about. And I have yet to find an L Word fan who tells me, oh, no, no, I, I really like those manatee dream things. So <laughs> the last category is you know the real bottom of the barrel decision that was made in the OG and that is turning season six into a murder mystery because that's that's a pretty pretty bad decision overall so these are the five categories and this is how we'll be ranking the storylines for season two and again, haven't included every single one, but the big, you know, umbrella overarching storylines that we had this season. So starting out with Shane and her gambling. This was a storyline that in the beginning, like the second episode was great when we had like Bet and Alice and Gigi and everyone coming and playing poker. And I love this. And then there were some little things that I was like, hmm, what's going on here when... Shane was saying about the money troubles like we didn't get the full story there so overall I feel as though this storyline slots perfectly into Shane's dog where there was flashes of something that could have been great here but overall I feel like the last half of the season we just didn't have any mention whatsoever so that's that's where that storyline is ranking for me. 
Next storyline up is the beginning of the season, the Bet and Gigi storyline. And I mean, it's going to come as no surprise to anyone who's watched even some of my videos that this storyline is going right in, boom, at the top in the Bet and Gigi category because although, you know, Danny and Gigi are are my ship and I'm behind it, I, I did deeply appreciate Bet and Gigi. And I think we needed to have the lust of Bet and Gigi to appreciate the love of Danny and Gigi. So yes, top category, whoever came up with Danny and Gigi and Bet and Gigi needs needs a serious pay raise. Next storyline is Alice and Nat and the whole, you know, polyamorous situation. And I'm going to put this in the category of Shane's dog again because I feel as though they they were onto something here that it could have been done well and there were flashes of brilliance, which I feel like I'm going to say this phrase a lot, but it just, the follow through and everything, I feel like it kind of dropped off and then of course Nat disappeared and we didn't really get any kind of resolve there, so that's where I'm feeling with with Alice and Nat and the whole tying up of their storyline. Next up is Sophie and Finley and their storyline over this season. And I'm not going to go totally there and say that they were, you know, murder mystery level, but I'm putting them in Jenny's manatee dreamscape. And I think this works out pretty well because Although there are a few Sinley shippers out there, and I I do really like Finley, but I I you know I I'm I'm not gonna like every single character just the way you know everybody else isn't gonna like every single character, and I feel as though a lot of people feel about Sophie and Finley as they felt about Jenny in the latter seasons of the OG. So Sophie and Finley definitely are Jenny's manatee dreamscape for me. Next up is Danny's dad storyline and this is another one where I was like there's flashes of brilliance like things that I was really interested in but I feel like we really got no proper information on what was going on and then boom all of a sudden we're in core and it just it, a lot of it really didn't make sense as to what was going on so this is firmly going down in the jenny manatee dreamscape category for me because i i just i would have loved to have known more i would have loved to have seen more of like Gigi supporting danny and like danny being the ceo and like working through things and the ramifications but it just and it, it felt really like rushed at the end so I definitely think it falls into our manatee dreamscape category. So next up is Finley's drinking and I know this has been quite controversial in the kind of fandom sphere because some people really think that it was forced and rushed and everything but I really don't feel that way. I feel as though it was done pretty well and it was very much alluded to in the first season and there was like bits throughout the second season. So I'm going to put this as Wheezy's <laughs> job at Bet and Tina's extension because I feel as though they, they did a really good job overall and there was a few little tweaks that I would have liked done but Overall, I really like this storyline and I think they did a good job with it. Next up is Danny and Gigi and their storyline. And although there was rushing and they didn't get a ton of screen time, I mean, just on pure feelings alone, they are going in the very top category of Bet and Gigi on the kitchen counter, which is kind of ironic because (laughs) Gigi is Danny, you know. That Gigi. So they are the high point of the season for me. I very much enjoyed them. I want to see way more. I love both Danny and Gigi. So to me, absolutely yes, top category, please. Next up is Shane and Tess and their storyline. And although I really enjoyed them, I like both Shane and Tess. 
I feel as though there was just some little things that towards the end didn't make tons of sense. Like their relationship was, I think the way I worked it out, it was over the course of like two weeks. But don't forget, we still haven't had confirmation what sort of time loop we're living in. So it mostly seems as though Shane and Tess have been together for two weeks, but it it could be three. (laughs) And the whole thing with like Tess moving to Vegas and just like being like Shane sell your bar and leave all your friends family like you know so I I do think that although they did a good job like building it and everything like that and having them like working together too that it was just a few little things that that needed tweaking and again the rushing which is like I think that the you know the showrunner too has has said like a lot of stuff was rushed towards the end and they are working on that so I definitely think that Shane and Tess falls into the wheezy (laughs) category so the next category I've kind of rolled it into one from two kind of storylines and that is Alice's show and like Sophie's development at Alice's show so I feel as though this season there just really was not a lot going on at Alice's show I mean we saw like little bits at the end and stuff and that was one of the things that I loved about season one I really wanted to know more about Alice's show and then there there was some things with Sophie where I know what they were doing like I know they were trying to like give Sophie something to do at work and like make her more passionate about her work but I really am resentful of the time that they used like I you know nothing against the the actresses or anything but the couple that they had on and like the time they spent about Sophie's work and then even the interview with those couple like I there's so much other stuff I would have loved to have used that time for I just uh, this show has so many so many characters already that introducing these characters for like little bit parts for two minutes that really do not add that much value to anything I mean it's a 10 episode series we don't need to to pad stuff out like this like fillery stuff so I really you know wish that they'd just done something else with the time here so it's going really really far down into the L word murder mystery decision because I even hate to put anything down there but I really dislike this and I just wish that they they would have used the time more wisely. So second to last is Carrie and Tina and their storyline and just scoring huge points right off the bat here by having Laurel Holloman in five episodes this season and also having Rosie O'Donnell play the other half of the couple so immediately big scoring points with me and I did like what they did with the limited time here but I have said I would have preferred if in the earlier episodes they treated them like episode nine basically because I know some people didn't like episode nine but to me it was one of the best episodes because everyone was together and like mixing and it just I I really enjoyed that part so I wish they would have had an episode like that in the, the first half of the season because I just feel like some of the therapy stuff and like I I just don't think that was really necessary if they're not going to develop it and I really did enjoy like all the time that Laurel and Rosie were on screen so pretty much those little tweaks and I would have been happy so they are firmly in the wheezy construction category. And so our final storyline is, this is again kind of like a two part one, is Bet and Pippa and Bet and the art world. And to me, the art stuff, again, I would have preferred if they used this time to develop the character of Pippa because I feel with Pippa, like apart from her being attached to Bet and being an artist and then the one little line about her son which I think we only got that line to literally be like 
check she checks everything in bet's boxes so i i just feel as though if vanessa williams was only going to come in and be a guest star in a few episodes then okay fine like she's coming in as a love interest but she was in pretty much the entire season and there seems to be like a definitely some sort of agreement that if they have a third season that she's going to come back in some capacity so i would have preferred if they established her as a character separate from bet and and in a way i'm like maybe it would have been better to introduce her and you know pad her out as a character and then have them together but i also understand that they only have so much time and everything like that and the art stuff i was just it it didn't go anywhere so like the same thing with danny's dad like having this whole thing with danny i didn't like that they made bet and danny argue and i feel like the art stuff just like went nowhere and then Pippa like we hardly knew anything about her so I'm gonna be generous and say that they're going into Shane's dog category because I feel like there's so much more they could have done while getting rid of some of the stuff that just went nowhere so Shane's dog (laughs) is where the bet and art and everything like that that story arc goes into so we are finishing our video with bet and Gigi, the top category having two storylines the next category being wheezy's construction job on bet and tina's extension i don't know why you guys know i love wheezy so that came out at three storylines next up shane's adorable little dog that we <laughs> never saw again ending up with three storylines and Jenny's hellscape manatee dreamscape ended up with two storylines and only one storyline ending up in the L word becomes a murder mystery category. So I I was pretty generous with some of these storylines because you know it's me, the, the L word apologist, the bed apologist, the everybody apologist, uh, the writer apologist, whatever you want to say. So I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't like the show. But yeah, I was... <laughs> was generous because there was some that probably should have been Elwood murder mystery level but you know we learn we live we strive for better so I hope that you guys enjoyed this fun little video and I hope you'll let me know your rankings down in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to the channel follow me on social media check out all my other videos and all the other shows I cover I also have a Patreon and an L Word merch store if you want to check those out. And all the information for everything will be linked down in the description box. And as always, make sure to stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!